Hey yo, this is Sam Ant and Oh God. Make sure you go check out our podcast, the Hip Hop Uncensored Podcast on radio.com you've seen us on youtube over 800,000 subscribers strong now if you want to listen to your brothers raw real uncut and most importantly in full go check us out on radio.com we bring you the latest news on all things hip-hop sports relationships politics you name it we cover it the most dangerous podcast out to date the hip-hop uncensored podcast check us out four days a week on the radio.com app let's go editing the video to the marketing of the video and everything like that so um yeah, every everybody doesn't do that, but you know, once you start adding all those components, and some of them are needed, obviously, you know, to get better camera angles, but um, you know, you got to split that pie as well. So, you know, what's needed, we'll have, but you know, we don't have to do nothing extra. Like we don't need somebody just sitting here that's not doing nothing. We paying them, you know. Yeah, so some are given, some are created. And the ones that are created, they don't got to give to any fucking body. Right. The ones that are given. They can get booted out anytime that motherfucker that gave it to him facts. decides it. Facts, facts. I mean, yeah, man. Well, while we in this energy, man, I think we should talk about Paul Mooney, man, because um the accusations that came out about Paul Mooney the other day, man, um crazy, Sam, man. So um, what's what's your thoughts on this whole Paul Mooney situation, now, man? I uh we we talked about it a couple of days ago. It was Richard Pryor's former bodyguard. He was on comedy uh comedy hype, and he was going in. He was mm-hmm. going in on Paul Mooney. He went in a um, they dropped a couple more episodes today and he went in. Um I, I initially, like we said, we didn't want to go ahead and automatically just totally disregard the claims because the accusations are very strong. And you don't want to just disregard claims like that because at the time they involve children. This is a situation and a plague that is plaguing our community as well as all communities and needs to be addressed and needs to be stopped. Um, so you don't want to take that lightly. You also don't want to take lightly at the fact that this is a man who was selling a book. We don't know the relationship between himself and Paul Mooney. Mm-hmm. Richard Pryor is no longer alive to um, confirm or deny these allegations. Richard Pryor Sr. or Jr. <laughs> saying things, not saying things, maybe too far out there to even talk about it. Who knows what we're going to get from him? And then we got silence from Paul Mooney. Let me talk about that because... I'm one, if people watch Viral Hip Hop News, if people listen to this podcast, I'm a fan of Paul Mooney. Uh, I've loved his writing, his comedic writing for a very long time. I loved his work on the Chappelle show, even though he's a homosexual. It is what it is. Still admire that man's work when it comes to comedic writing. But that would never oversaturate or over, um, over, uh, go over the, what's the word I'm looking for? That would never trump Right, right. Him doing anything disgusting to a child. If he did, yeah. he's canceled. He's done. Yeah, yeah. The fact that he's not saying anything, it scares me. Whew. Now, when you look at um Khan and his his um saying that Richard Pryor and Paul Mooney had a relationship and that got kind of squashed a long time ago. I don't know about that. You've seen uh Paul Mooney and the Richard Pryor roast that happened damn near 18, 20 years prior uh, after Richard Jr. was born. You see other times when you see Paul Mooney pushing Richard in a wheelchair when he was sick. And it was so many different timelines where Mm -hmm. you see these two together where the timing doesn't make sense. But him canceling the show. Yeah. Him not saying anything outside of the denying when you see him very outspoken on so many other issues, most issues, is troubling to me. Yeah, it's scary, man. And I think that speaks volumes. They always say silence is consent now. My thing is like, this is something that has to be attacked head on. Maybe you don't have to come out, you know, and speak at a comedy show, you know, or even take the podium on this. But it's a situation where he needs to release a two paragraph statement through a publicist or a lawyer or something saying, look, these accusations, you know, um, are completely false. And what was we plan on doing? And, you know, when somebody puts an accusation out like this, you should be, you know, to show a gesture that you're innocent file a defamation lawsuit against that would be that would be my first move you're not just going to come out especially with an allegation like this it's something else or something you could just ignore or whatever but an allegation you know of a pedophilia messing with a younger uh you know boy and you just sit there quiet i hate to say it and i i will never ever say that he did it but for people who are on the fence it's going to look like he may be scared or retreating. He's canceling shows. He's backpedaling. I don't like it. What, yeah, what are you hiding when you're so outspoken on so many issues? Now it's silence when your life, you know, um, your, your career and reputation is now on the line. Who wants something like this hanging over their head? Now, maybe 
you know, we're novice than this. And, you know, he talked to his lawyers and his lawyers said, look, we're going to handle this behind the scenes. Maybe that stuff is being done. Maybe it takes time. I don't know. But the silence each day goes past. It gets worse and worse. I'll always be a novice and being accused of having sex with a fucking kid. And <laughs> right, the right, second right. I ain't, I'm going to deny it. I'm not talking to my lawyer first, even right. if I'm smart enough to know, OK, maybe I shouldn't get out here full of emotion, even though I know I'm 100 percent innocent. And say some things that a defense can go ahead and flip and twist. But I know that I can articulate word properly enough to properly put down a statement, mm -hmm. read it two or three times and drop that to the public by the end of the evening to let them know, listen, right now, I can only say this. I'm innocent, innocent, innocent. These are lies. Right. I got further more details. I got my lawyer on it. Y'all stick around soon. I'll see you here. Because right. I think that was very important. And I'm this is what we are novice in, and that's how to deal with these kind of issues and then going about your job, your business. But I think that the comedy ring is the best place to kind of go ahead and attack this shit. Head oh, on. yeah. Yeah. Even though, you know, people had their cameras out and maybe his lawyer told him maybe cancel shows because you want to go in and we don't know. And, and Mr. Mooney, you, your sons, a lot of people watch our show. You know, we want to talk to you. You know, we want to interview. We go out to New York. I know you live in Harlem. Come here. Whatever it has to be done. We can make that happen. I want to show you real quick, oh God, because I don't know if you've seen this is from back in the 70s, 77 to be exact. A couple minutes. I'm not going to hold you long. A Richard Pryor talking about Paul Mooney. Mm -hmm. Just listen no doubt, to his no mannerisms. Listen to it. Does this seem like a man that doesn't like a brother or wants a brother killed? Now, mind you, we don't know when that act, when that alleged hit came out, but this is 77. Right. His son was born in 61. Let's hear it. Okay. Now she cleans her cage. <laughs> but I love her dearly. <laughs> Next to her is what we call Miss Thing. <laughs> love and affection <laughs> as all of us know <laughs> well he hasn't let us down yet <laughs> we, we've been uh, friends a long time and uh, uh, I, I sure wish you'd return my red handkerchief <laughs> my wife's been wondering where it was <laughs> I hope it still has her perfume scent on it. <laughs> but really, uh, Paul, it, it's really been a pleasure working with you because we worked together many years ago on the Red Fox show. We started writing together and we walked into the office with the white man and Paul didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't, uh, what he did was suck his dick. <laughs> Shout out to the goat, man. Rest in yeah. peace to the goat. But I, yeah. you see the look and genuine love in his face for that man. Right. Didn't look like a man that he was trying to kill. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know when this happened. If anybody has anything in the comment section, right. kind of drop in right. regards to that. Let me know. Hopefully, Mr. Mooney, these accusations isn't true. We, you're not getting any help from Richard Pryor Jr. because he's leaving a lot of windows open and gates open. For what, do you, the look, what do you to say to there? the fact that he's, uh, you know, you show me the picture, mm -hmm. Richard Pryor Jr. in a dress. Mm -hmm. Uh, it looks like he's been through some things. What does that say about it? Obviously, he was molested. Yeah. You see a lot of men, whether they want to admit it or not, and females, and females, yeah, yeah. who choose to become lesbian or become gay, that often has something to do to what happened to them in their childhood involving the same sex, involving an adult of the same sex, or maybe possibly in a women's situation involving an adult male and them being so turned off that they don't ever want to even be intimate with a man again. Um, you see a lot of boys who have been molested who choose homosexual activity. So it's no surprise to me yep. um, that he was, in fact, molested. He, in fact, admitted that he was a molested. The fact that he did not say or did say that it was Paul Mooney. Why are you leaving gates open and shit? Don't if you care about Paul Mooney, if he didn't do it, deny it. If he did do it. I mean, is it is it is it power or is it something to say in his silence? Yeah, this is this is a real touchy situation, man. Yeah, man. We're gonna you're gonna see how this, you know, develops. I guess in the coming months, you know, uh, Richard Pryor's former bodyguard does have a book mm -hmm. coming out. Would you be 
reading that or you don't care to? Um, it has my interest. I do enjoy reading. It's right. not something that I'm uh, I'm looking to go and break the uh break the bookstore to go <laughs> grab or anything real quick. <laughs> right, but right. If I do come across it, yeah, I'll read it for sure. Definitely, man. But yeah, man, you're tuning into the Hip Hop Uncensored podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam. And if you're listening, if you're enjoying. Thank you.